Good morning and welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops. Uh, I'm Bill Schwab as usual and got a little surprise today for a day out. Um, I like to do these day outs where we go out shooting and I'll put up some of the photographs that I make during the day and what I'm planning on doing now is bringing it back into the studio later and taking it into a Lightroom and showing you how I process some of the photographs that I take. But uh, anyway, this is what we've got today. It is a beautiful day. It's one of those days where it's like living in a snow globe. Uh, so anyway, what we're going to do is we got to get back in the house and uh, or back in the uh, studio here and uh, get my gear together. I mean, I'm usually telling you to uh, be vigilant for these things and be ready to go. And unfortunately, I don't always do as I say. I'm not quite sure I have all my gear ready to go. I do know I have the drone batteries charged, so we will be able to get some aerials and some things like that. So it's great, isn't it? There is nothing like this place on a lacy, snowy day like this. Well, let's not waste this. We got to get out on the road. Okay, so we are in the car, we've got everything packed up, we're ready to go. Let's hit the snowy trail. Well, I always say, the measure of a good photographer is what they can find in their own backyard, right? So, uh, I didn't even make it to the end of the driveway and look what I've run into. Um, we're going to have to go out there and work on this. Isn't this incredible? This is my garden in the summer and I've got this, uh, plastic deer fencing around it and it has caught the snow beautifully. So uh, let's get back to the car, get my gear, come back here and make a couple of snaps. So this is really incredible and I'll just give you an idea what I'm going to do here right now is uh, the way that there's the separation from the fence that's in the front and the one that's in the back, um, I can see through to the one in the back. So what I'm going to try to do is play a little bit with that back and forth with a little bit of the, uh, you know, focus with focus on the foreground fence and maybe on the background fence, that kind of thing. Um, and then just play around with a whole lot of different compositions because, you know, this is probably the one chance this year I'll get a chance to do this. And uh, you've always got to work things for what they are. Um, work the problem as I always say. So. Now, what I'm going to be doing is shooting at a uh, 400 ISO, which is what I usually do. And I'm going to be shooting all manually uh, because I don't want any other control over exposure other than mine. Um, 
So I just set the can camera on manual. Uh, I'm going to be shooting at a 400 ISO, which means that I'm going to have probably pretty fast shutter speeds today because I'm going to want to open up the lens a little bit wider so that I can have selective focus. And uh, sometimes that's hard to do at a high SO on a really bright day like this. So we'll see what I can do. Oh yeah, wow. Okay, so let's see here. Once again, I'm going to turn off the autofocus and uh, wow. Okay, so playing with my exposure, I'm going up to a, uh, a 250th here. And at a 250th at middle gray, which is the uh, which is the uh, the reading your meter will read at a middle gray. I'm getting a uh, an f11 at a 250th. Now I'm going to want to back it off a little bit from that. I'm probably going to do like an f8, and we'll start there. Yeah, f8 gives a little bit of an overexposure. Yeah, that's just about right. Um, okay, so I'm just going to play around a little bit with that and I will also play a little bit with exposure and um, when we go through Lightroom and I show you how I work this image up, I'll give you an idea how that worked and how I, uh, how I handle that. Oh yeah, this is really nice. Focus on that back lens. Oh, it's just so beautiful. You know, really, on a day like today, you can hardly go wrong. Uh, and I tend to feel, you know, a lot of times when things like this happen, you know, it'll warm up, the wind will start going, it'll change in an instant, so you really feel this, I feel this stress and anxiety to, to really work it. So I'm going to shut up. Yeah, I'm excited to show you what I do with these. Yeah, and on this one, I'm kind of playing around with the uh, the vertical fence posts here, also working them into my composition, which I'll show you when we uh, when we work on these. Now I'm going to kick it up to an exposure of a thousand, so that I can uh, play around a little bit more with selective focus. Yeah, here we go. Nice. <laughs> you can tell I enjoy doing this, right? I know you do too. Okay. Maybe it's time to hit the road. I want to get stuck in my own driveway. All right, without further ado, we'll get back on the road. But you got to admit, that was worth stopping for, right? You know? And like I say, uh, you know, I don't even know if I've talked about that in these videos yet, but. Um, you know, people always talk about how they need to go places to take photographs. And, you know, I know I've got 10 acres here in a big yard, but uh, I used to think that all the time and it trapped me in my mind and I wasn't able to get out and photograph. And then finally I just decided, you know, I've got to make do with what I have in my own neighborhood. And at this time I lived in Dearborn. It was, uh, you know, I lived near the Ford Rouge plant and at night I would hear the, uh, the plant working over there and I just started thinking, you know, it's nighttime, there's plenty of light, I'll go out and work. and. Uh, that's when I really started to feel like I could do really great work right in my own backyard, so to speak. So uh, anyway, keep that in mind, all right? You don't have to go around the world to take great photographs. So let's get back on the road, eh?
All right, so no road trip is complete with a little road munchies. And I've stopped here at my favorite place around my, uh, my home here, which is the Cross Village store. And uh, I'll take you in there with me. Let's go. Okay, ready to go. Hey Mark, how you doing? Good, how about I'm doing good. I'm gonna cheese a little. Every day is one day closer to spring, right? right. <laughs> days are already getting longer. Yeah, I know, it's nice. All right, sir, thank you. All right, take care, bye-bye. That was Mark. I'll tell him later that he was on camera, make sure it's okay with him. All right, let's hit the road. Well, the first place I've brought you along the uh, road trip here, other than the uh, cozy little Cross Village store, is uh, here along Lake Michigan in uh, 119. Uh, 119 is a scenic byway that runs near me. Uh, goes from Cross Village down to Harbor Springs, Michigan. It's nicknamed the Tunnel of Trees around here because of the tree line, the trees that grow up over it. It's basically only a one lane road that goes, uh, it's about 22 mile run. And uh, in the summertime, this is crawling with cyclists and motorcycles and then in the fall with the leaf peepers. But this time of the year, I get it pretty much to myself. So uh, I'm just going to get my gear out of the car here and um, make a couple exposures out here over the lake. And uh, we'll see if we don't get something uh, that we can work with later on. Now this is one of the few places along the way where it's really clear enough to be able to uh, work with the horizon out on the lake. And that's in between. There's up around Sturgeon Bay where the, the beaches are and things like that, of course. But I like this because it's one of the few places where there are some trees contrasted against the, uh, the landscape in the background, or say, should I say the seascape or lakescape. So anyway. Let's see what we can do here. It's just these three trees I'm always fascinated by, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to isolate them and uh, once again shooting at ISO 400 and uh, I want the horizon to be in sharp focus as well, so I'm shooting here at a uh, shutter speed of 400. Um, and that gives me like around F10 at my middle gray. So I'm going to open off a little bit from that. So let's say we're going to shoot F8 at 400 here. Which is working out just about perfectly. And then once again, like with the shot and the fencing, um, just going to work through the problem. I'm going to work through trying to isolate these three trees. Um, I'm working with my um, my 24 to 70 zoom lens, so I can pull in a little bit more. I can do a little bit more isolation of the trees, but then again, I can also go out to wide. So we're just going to play around a little bit. Yeah. Really nice. I can pull in and I can even take this low line of trees out and just oscillate the three trees here with the horizon going across them. And what I'm really trying to do here is not blow out the, uh, the sky, the highlights. I mean, there's virtually no detail in the sky right now, but yet I don't want that to be clipped. I don't want the histogram to clip and have a flat line on the top of it. I want to be able to have some tonality in that sky no matter what. 
And then later on, if I choose to be able to blow it out, then I can. But I want everything in my exposure that I can get. I want everything in my file that I can get. Now, as I've probably said before, I shoot everything at raw, in RAW. And I highly advise everybody to do that. Because then it gives you your basic piece of film, so to speak, with all of the information that's in there. And then you pick and choose what you want and how you want it to be represented in your final image. Now the shot that I've gotten here is pretty much what I had envisioned and I'm happy with what I have so far. So uh, normally I would think that wouldn't be enough for me. I would rather uh, shoot the hell out of it and make sure that I had other options available to me, but the more experience you get with your photographs, and a lot of you may have already found this out, is that you, you pretty much know what you like and you pretty much know what you can get with it. And uh, you can focus in on that. It's good to focus in on that. Uh, but also, you do have to leave yourself aware to the other possibilities that are there. And uh, so normally I would work this a lot more. But uh, because I live here and I see this view quite often and I work it in different light and different uh, weather conditions, I think I've got what I'm looking for. So let's move on. So I brought you to another spot here along the uh, way back home. Now, what happened was, as you could see, we got over along the lake and the lake, we got down to lake level and uh, this beautiful lacy snow went away. Um, what very often happens is we get this lake effect snow that comes off the lake. It's just because of the breezes that come off. And when, the, when that moist air hits the edge of the lake and it starts to rise up around here where I am in the high ground, uh, this, this happens and um, unfortunately, it wasn't that way along the lake. I had kind of hoped to find more of this over there, but uh, nevertheless, I brought you back up to the high ground nearer to my house and nearer to the studio. And uh, I found this little string of dogwoods along here that I pass all the time, and they just look beautiful, all intertwined with the, uh, with the snow on them. So uh, this is where we're gonna work right now. What I wanna do is get down a little bit lower here so that I'm more at their level, and I can see once again, just like when I was working with the fence this morning, um, I like to be able to see through things and I like to be able to have selective focus working when I'm doing that. So pretty much what I was doing with the fence this morning is what I'm doing here with these dogwoods against this nice uh, empty cornfield. So bear with me here while I make a few exposures. Yeah. Once again, shooting at ISO 400 like I usually do, adjusting my aperture from there. Wow, this is just beautiful. I don't know if you can hear the chickens off in the background. Such a nice day to photograph. I think that's enough for now, let's move on. Okay, the next stop on our adventure. We're along here on Robinson Road, not too far away from home. And uh, as you can see, as we get into higher ground, it gets back into that crazy, beautiful, lacy effect and uh, before heading back to the studio I thought this has to be a this has to be a stop so here we go um, what I'm gonna do is get the camera out and I'm gonna set up out here now you can see look right behind me out in the woods is some really incredible lacy stuff out there and uh, that's really what I'm going for and uh, 
let's get to it. Okay, so once again, I'm just gonna keep using the 400 ISO that I've been using all along. Keeps everything consistent for me. Uh, um, you probably have a favorite to work with, but uh, this has always been the one of mine, and it kind of harkens back to the Tri-X that I used to use, the uh, black and white film. Uh, I just kind of like the bit of grain that you get with it, that kind of thing. Not that it's the same with digital, but my brain is wired to work with 400 ISO, and that's how my internal meter works. That's how I'm able to pull off these shots by kind of guessing where the ISO is, I mean where the uh, exposure and the metering is going to be. Anyway, enough of that. This is pretty incredible. Now I kind of want everything crisp and sharp in here, so I'm going to go to a you know, 60th of a second at F8 to start with. And that's kind of my middle gray. Um, I want to go a little bit more than that, so I'm going to go to like F6, maybe even 5, 6. Wow, it's beautiful. Yep, that's what I want. Beautiful lacy underbrush. I'm trying to selectively focus with that. Now I'm really kind of going for a little bit more of overexposure right now to try to make things look a little more ghost like, and I think it's working. It's beautiful. And once again, working with my focal length, doing some things tight and some things wide open. You'll see what you'll see what I mean when we get back to the studio and work on these in the next video. Okay. Light's starting to fade again, and I'd like to our light is starting to fade, and I'd like to get on to at least one more shot before we go back to the studio. So let's get on our way here. Well, for the last shot of the day, I've stopped here at two of my favorite trees in all of uh, the area. Um, I just live up the road from here, and these two maples that you can see behind me right now have been a muse for me for some years now. In fact, they became kind of a, uh, you know, one of my better known images back in 1998 was called Moonbeams and Maples, and that was these trees behind me right now. Uh, it was about four o'clock in the morning, and I was driving along, heading home from a music festival that happens up here. and. Uh, the moon was out full um, up in the sky and the fog was hanging low over the field and I just couldn't help it. You know, I, I blasted back home, uh, you know, up the hill here and I picked up my uh, old Hasselblad and came down the hill and made a bunch of images. And once again, talking today about vigilance and being ready for things, you know, it was a good thing that I was at that time. So I guess what I'm saying is, is that uh, Keep your camera with you all the time. You know, you never know what you're going to see and you never know what's going to become one of your very best images. And that's what happened with me back here one night back uh, many years ago now. It's kind of scary. So uh, 22, 22 years. Uh, so anyway, um, if you had a good time today, how about giving me a thumbs up? That'd be really cool. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, do that. Um, I really hope you'll stick around and see me in the next video, which should be linked up here when it's ready. Uh, and what I'm going to do on that video is I'm going to take the images that we made today and I'm going to take them into Lightroom and into Photoshop and show you what I would do uh, to make them kind of my own. Um, so I hope you'll stick around and do that. But uh, for today, I think we've done about enough. I'm going to grab the camera out of the car. I'm going to make a few images of the, uh, the trees back here and uh, head back home and get something to eat. So I hope you've had a good time. Uh, anyway, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Till next time. Mm -hmm.